Bed Bath & Beyond is back, sort of. Overstock.com is going to adopt the bankrupt company's domain name after buying its intellectual property for $21.5 million. That renamed site will debut in Canada within the next week, followed by a U.S. rollout in the weeks to come. Shares of Overstock, by the way, this morning are up 13% on the news. The rebrand, the latest move by Overstock to capture more market share in the home goods and furniture space. Joining us now, first on Yahoo Finance, is Overstock CEO Jonathan Johnson. Jonathan then great to see you in person. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Brad, for having me. I mean, I have to say we've been captivated by the Bed Bath & Beyond story, so it's so interesting to see you all taking over the name. We have talked about before the re-imaging and pivot that Overstock has done and the work that you've tried to do to get customers to see what Overstock is. So how does now attaching the Bed Bath & Beyond name do that for you? So we think we've had a lot of headwind with the Overstock name. We haven't been a liquidator for over two decades. It's been headwind for customers who come and expect liquidation products. It's been headwind for customers who find what they want but have some niggling concern that it might be an Overstock product even when it hasn't been. So there's been that headwind. Suppliers have also sometimes been hesitant to associate their brand with something that felt like liquidation. So all this headwind is hurt us as we've gone to be a 100% home retailer. Bed Bath & Beyond, on the other hand, the generic meaning of those words is just who we are. In fact, we think we're Bed Bath and a bigger and better beyond. And so when this opportunity came up, it just made a lot of sense. We think it will help us with suppliers, help us with customers, as we have transitioned a year ago to a 100% home company. We've seen the IP of formerly fallen retail companies be scooped up in the past like this before, whether it's Dick Sporting Goods getting the IP of the Sports Authority, whether it's um, the True Kids acquisition of um, Toys R Us and their, their IP. And so all of that to say, after that, it's, it's hard to tell what determines successful acquisition of some of that IP. From your perspective, how would you determine this a success? What is the marker that you would look to to say that us purchasing this IP was the right decision? Well, first and foremost, our number one metric is going to be, are we increasing active customers? You know, that, that peaked during the pandemic. It's been sliding. The customer lists that we've acquired from Bed Bath & Beyond are much larger than ours. I think we'll see active customers go up. I think we'll see revenue go up. You know, what happens to some of the other metrics? AOV may come down a little bit. We know we'll spend more on marketing, at least initially, as we're going out and reaching to these customers, making sure our overstock customer feels welcome on the newly branded Bed Bath & Beyond site, and that the Bed Bath & Beyond customers see what they want and re-engage. Um, so you talked about the, the advantages of acquiring the name. What about the disadvantages? I mean, this is a failed retailer. So when you think about the optics of attaching now your brand to that, how do you factor that in? So we spent a lot of time looking at this before we did this deal. The brand is still very strong. Customers associated with home, they love the loyalty program. Um, mismanagement can run companies into the ground, but it doesn't really, we don't think it's hurt the brand here. You know, and as we watched Bed Bath go through what it was going through, there was you know, a ton of social media. We, we, we want it to be around. And so uh, we think that it will be a little different than other companies because we're really adopting the name. Uh, it's gonna help propel us forward. It's taking headwind and turning it into tailwind. And I think that has huge potential upside. Are you expanding the products that you're offering as part of this? We are, we've been working on breadth and depth. Uh, recently, we've been particularly focused on bed and bath products. We've got already a bigger beyond. In the week after the news broke that we were the stocking horse bidder in the bankruptcy proceedings, we added over uh, 100,000 new bed and bath related products. So we knew that we had some headwind with suppliers, and this just proved it out as people came to us and said, We'd love to be a supplier and help you with these products that you're going to need and want. We've got drawers full of coupons. Do you keep the coupons? Is that something that customers should still expect to come forward? 
So Bed Bath & Beyond has been a high-low retailer. The coupons are so important. Overstock also is a couponer. Uh, one thing I think you'll see us initially do is be aggressive on coupons as we reach out to these customers. But I would note that our pricing has been a little bit different than Bed Bath & Beyond. I think the Bed Bath & Beyond customer will want the coupon, but will also find that our pricing beats the Bed Bath & Beyond historical non-couponed price. So yes, we will provide coupons, probably start out strong like uh, Bed Bath was used to, but it, they won't be quite as big as we move forward. And the loyalty program that you mentioned that was so popular? So we're, we have our Club O loyalty program. We'll be morphing that into the welcome rewards. Uh, all the benefits of Club O will come with it. Uh, we're reaching out to the uh, welcome rewards participants. We want to make sure they're there. We think our new loyalty program expanded will be even better than what either provided before. Within retail, I mean, home, appliances, and some of the toy categories, they've been sitting in a lull right at this point in time. So have you seen any type of bounce back, any concerted attention even in searches among consumers right now? Still a tough macro environment, particularly for our category. I mean, I know earlier in the show you were talking about interest rates and slower home sales. That, that certainly hurts us. I do think it was important that we maintained and continue to maintain a strong balance sheet because it's in environments like this that opportunities arise and this allowed us to jump on that opportunity and take advantage. I think we're gonna perform well even while the macro is hard, hard for the industry. Um, on uh, the conference call, or I guess in preparation for the conference call today, you put out sort of the recipe for how this is going to work, bringing together what you see as the strengths of each of these uh, brands here. The same time you made this announcement that you were acquiring the IP and making changing the name of the website, you also said that your second quarter sales um, likely fell 20% year over year. How soon does that change? How soon do you see sales actually rising year over year? And does this name change accelerate that timeline? So our deceleration in sales is slowing. It's not where we want it to be. Uh, we'll you know, talk more about the second quarter when we re release our numbers. I think this has to help. Uh, it will help with top line. Uh, it will ultimately help with bottom line. But as I noted on the call today, We'll spend the next few quarters probably deviating from our standard marketing practices and going a little bit harder as we reach out to these new customers. We'll have a good sense. You know, you, you mentioned in the opening that uh, Canada is first. We actually launched our Bed Bath & Beyond.ca site this morning. Closed the deal yesterday, launched that site this morning. Crisp, clean. We think we'll learn a lot in the next weeks and be ready to launch strong in the U.S. early August. I'm going to have to get my sister in Canada to check, in Vancouver to check that out and give me back a report. Um, are you going to change the corporate name of Overstock? You know, early days, we just finished this acquisition. Uh, I expect we will in the coming months, but we want to make sure we get the operations right uh, and focus on that before we do some of this corporate work. Is, is there a leading candidate? It's, you're tossing around ideas even at the table. Not yet. You know, no. we'll, we'll look at a lot of different things. We, we've acquired a lot of different names as part of the uh, Bed Bath & Beyond IP. We've got thoughts of where the company will go in the future. We'll be careful, but we will do business as Bed Bath & Beyond because that's the iconic brand that Americans loved and we're glad to be saving. You know, even just lastly here, as we think about the, the credit state for a lot of companies in retail that have tried to make sure that they are still in good standing with their suppliers, how would you evaluate that? How would you say that Overstock's credit state currently sits? So our suppliers love doing business with us because we have this healthy balance sheet. We ended the f first quarter of this year with over 300, about 375 million in the bank allowed us to do this deal all cash, which made a difference in the bankruptcy proceeding. Uh, I know a lot of suppliers, you know, their asset-backed lenders or their factors worry who they sell to. They have no worries with us. So we feel like we have this strong balance sheet that makes a difference in a lot of ways, lets us play offense with suppliers and when opportunities like this arise. Jonathan, thanks so much for taking the time coming here in studio. We uh, can't wait to hear more to come 
on this major IP acquisition, uh, Jonathan Johnson, who is, of course, the Overstock CEO. Thanks so much. Brad, Julie, thanks for having me. Thank you. Good to see you.